The hero who could have been you takes center stage in her own series. We going to Hi everyone, welcome to another exciting episode, another edition of A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube. Let's uh, talk about a book that not a lot of people gave a second look at. Of course, I am talking about Gwenpool. Yes, welcome guys. I am very excited to talk about Gwenpool. I previously did a volume one on this series not too long ago. I'm going to say early 2017. After so long, I finally finished the series. And on the first uh, video, I talked about the character at length and how she came about and all that stuff. And to uh, summarize the whole thing, basically, she was a gag uh, variant cover. And then people were kind of interested in the character and they gave her a shot in, I believe, Howard the Duck, the uh, recent Marvel Now series. And uh, yeah, she took the world by storm and had her own Marvel series lasting 25 issues, which is a huge accomplishment. When you think of characters like uh, Mockingbird, uh, her recent series, which I think only lasted like eight or nine issues and got canceled. Uh, you also had Silk. She had like a mini reboot of her own with another, two number one issues, Spider Gwen, etc., etc. But with the character of Gwenpool, you have a very interesting... Uh, character, I should say, that not a lot of people were ready for. Yes, there is a ton of hate out there for the character for some reason, but I am trying to persuade you otherwise in this video. I don't know why I need to show all the traits, but yeah, there's volume one, two, and three, and four, and volume five of the series in really thin, uh, affordable trades that everybody can get it's like nine or ten bucks if you know where to look and uh yeah in our first video i kept it spoiler free i might spoil just a few tiny details on this series uh but overall i'll keep it spoiler free if you want to uh venture into gwenpool i'll link up the uh video review somewhere over here uh, but yeah, the character is pretty interesting. She is from the real world, uh, similar to ours, and then she gets magically transported into the Marvel Universe. And it sounds like wish fulfillment, I guess, and some people might not like the idea because they're stuck with two things. One, the fact that she started out as a joke in a variant cover. And two, the fact that she is combining uh, Gwen and uh, Deadpool into, you know, forming Gwenpool, but that's actually her name, uh, Gwendolyn Pool, I guess, Gwenpool. So yeah, the book is The Unbelievable Gwenpool, and it is a fun ride. It is really, really cool. It, it, the way Christopher Hastings, the writer, is able to utilize a character that otherwise would have been like a cheap throwaway makes it into a smart, introspective look at what makes us unique. The character of Gwenpool is trying to find herself throughout the 25 issues, and I believe there's like this one-shot Christmas special. The character is trying to find herself in themes of self-worth, of finding yourself, of doubt, fear, and trust. These are all examined in a pretty fun and unique way. Of course, there are some issues with the series, which I'll get to in a minute, but yeah, the character basically lands in the Marvel Universe, and I hate to admit it, but she has one of the most powerful assets in the Marvel Universe, which is knowledge of every single character out there, from their real identities to their weaknesses, and she could exploit that if she wanted to. At first, she begins her career as a mercenary, similar to another famous Merc with a Mouth, and as the series progresses and she befriends certain enemies like uh, Badrock the Leaper and then she goes into the MODOK uh, organization and actually defeats MODOK himself and takes control of that organization through some serious hijinks. Uh, yeah, the character keeps progressing and she realizes that she doesn't really want to be a supervillain 
or a just a regular villain she wants to do good she's not an evil person now one of the things i did not like about the first volume was the first issue which really presented and i'm just gonna say it like this in a it presented the character in a very sleazy way whereas uh, later volumes presented her presented her in a much more likable and colorful, cheerful, optimistic uh, style that I really appreciated and made the series feel more wholesome, if you will. Like here in the first uh, volume, as you can see right there, the character just doesn't look right in my opinion. It isn't until much later where uh, Guri Hiru, I think I said that right, steps in and really just gives uh, gives it a very unique anime inspired flair and just wit and charm that I really really appreciated. This is one of my favorite scenes from the first book where um, Gwenpool is trying to get the attention of uh, Jane Foster Thor so this is what she comes up with and just the expressions and the usage of color and uh well like i just said the facial expressions and all that stuff really make it a unique read unlike most of the marvel books i really really freaking enjoyed the art in this it is bright and beautiful except for those first issue for that first issue where it just looked weird as heck man check out modok with his mohawk and just great overall fun in the first volume as you can see so at the end, uh, Modok is taken care of, and she is the leader in Volume 2 of the Modok organization, as you can see, head of Modok, and she gets into further adventures. She meets Miles Morales, Spider-Man, and she's geeking out, of course, like anybody would, with meeting uh, your favorite comic book characters. In Volume 3, we also do get an epic team-up between uh, Ghost Rider and uh, Kate Bishop Hawkeye. And... Uh, this excellent crossover, which I will show you in a quick second, with Deadpool himself, one of the highlights of this uh, of this book. This is just fun. I don't want to repeat myself and spend the whole video just saying, "Oh, it's fun. It's a fun series." It really is. It. I know a lot of people are going to complain, and I'll probably get a dislike out of some angry uh, comic book fan that just does not approve of this character, but. This is the type of story where you, if you give it a shot, the characters will open up, the story will open up, and you'll find something that you like. Whether it be the art, the kooky characters, the insane plot, or even Gwenpool herself. In my case, I was a huge fan of the character, and I really liked her usage of the fourth wall breaking, because unlike Deadpool, he's still a comic book character, whereas this, um hero or villain if you will she is her own unique specimen if you will and that is evident with her knowledge and the way she talks to the reader and there is a lot of fourth wall breaking to the point where eventually the characters themselves break out of the comic book into the gutter space universe or something it gets wild and crazy some um some issues though tend to dwell a little bit too much on the whole mercenary thing and the fighting and whatnot and it, it doesn't grow beyond that but other stories which are featured in the third volume really uh, as well as for the fourth and fifth really examine uh, the character of Gwenpool in a very interesting way and this might be some slight spoilers just in case right over here she ends up meeting an evil version of herself where basically this alternate reality where you know she's trying to do good but at the end of the day her knowledge it's troublesome and it's flat out annoying she uh, basically has the entire Marvel Universe by the grasp of her uh, hand and uh, she could do a lot of dangerous things with it now when this future version comes into the present um, it starts this whole dilemma of Gwen realizing that she wanted to be a hero all along and was trying to escape her realistic life with her uh, brother and parents and all that stuff 
and you do get to see her life outside the Marvel Universe, and that was extremely compelling and uh, somewhat relatable. I am pretty sure uh, audiences can find similarities with how the character grows up with uh, their own life and stuff. I think uh, Hastings did a really good job of humanizing and grounding the character in a believable sort of way. The issue which I'm talking about, and if you've read the series, you might already know what, where I'm headed, where we see her real life and the way she interacts with the comic book world, but still being on the real earth, if you will, is pretty freaking brilliant. I love how she's using panels and dialogue boxes and captions and all that stuff in very creative and interesting ways and it really deconstructs the purpose and the utility of a comic book panel just uh let me try and show you without spoiling much like you see stuff like this where the character you know she lost her hoodie and i don't know if you can see down below right here she grabs it from uh, a fellow modok uh worker uh, sort of this uh grunt that she dressed up as Gwenpool in earlier issues and yeah out of panel she grabs the hoodie and stuff like that where she interacts with the comic book world and alters uh, their uh, reality basically. Here we have this cool example of the characters just escaping a hairy situation but just leaving flat out leaving the comic book. It, it was something else man I really enjoyed the fact that this book is the stuff that happens underneath what everybody else is reading and it's doing its own thing you don't need to know about uh events or uh, crossovers or, or marveled history the book is very self-explanatory and it finds its own footing by doing its own thing it didn't get bogged down at all if i were to fault it for something it would be the Ghost Rider uh, trio issues where, she, where uh, Gwenpool teams up with uh, Hawkeye. That to me was the weakest part because it, it, it was a little bit frenetic and I think the character stands best on her own without so many guest characters and stuff because at the end of the series there are a lot of cameos and guest appearances where the character realizes that um, you are who you are and that is the most important lesson i guess that a comic book can teach the new generation and if you don't like that message i i i can't do anything for you uh, just the idea that you're trying to either be good or bad and you're trying to change who you are because you're afraid of what might happen and you got to meet these expectations or stuff like that where you just got to look back and say no i am who i am and that defines me and moves me along into the future, if you will. And I guess that's the main, that's one of the main themes in the Gwenpool series. Also, this is some slight spoilers, but one of my favorite moments in the whole series comes just right at the end in this very endearing moment between the character of Gwenpool and Badrock where she knows what's happening of course everybody else thinks she's crazy because she's talking about comic books and whatever and she says like it sucks that uh this book is going to get cancelled and who knows what might happen to these side characters because other writers might not use the version that was seen in this book and write it completely different and that is pretty much true if you've read a lot of comic books it happens all the time so i thought it was pretty smart i also loved to wrap things up i've talked on for way too long at the end of the book the character faces this existential crisis because she knows she's about to get cancelled and she needs a future version of herself and creates sort of this time loop if you will where both versions are talking and it is some of the most interesting panels and artwork that I really enjoyed. Some of the dialogue just basically reaffirms my uh, themes for this book. Uh, when you refuse to turn, you knew you were giving up your future, and you knew, and you knew it in a real and concrete way that other heroes never get the opportunity to. You came here with the belief that none of the people here mattered because they weren't real, and you've come all the way to giving up everything to not hurt them. You did become a hero, Gwen. 
and that'll buy you some kind of future around these parts, even if it isn't in the pages of the unbelievable Gwenpool Volume 1. A little bit spoilerish, but it's okay. You don't just live here, you're in games, toys, guest stars, and other titles, fanfic, roleplay, Twitter accounts. Someday one of these fans might get a pro gig and remember to stick you in some of the new, uh, in some new version of the Great Lake Avengers. And just the idea, like I mentioned, that these themes and characters, they don't die, they keep moving forward and eventually somebody will do something else. I thought it was really smart on Hastings' part to conclude a series that was very meta and self-referential and just to end it on a high note about the comic book industry as a whole and cancellations of books and feeling sad that the story's over don't feel sad because if the ending was great um, it's better than just going on and on and on and not having a definitive ending or a strong uh, point for this character to conclude his arc and to me that makes it pretty worthwhile. I don't know, I've rambled on for way too long about Gwenpool. It's a fantastic, underrated series. Please look past the gag and try to see it for what it is. It is a cute, funny title that could. It lasted for 25 issues and just brought a lot of heart in an otherwise bleak and uh, interesting world of comic books. What do you think of Gwenpool? Let me know down below. As always, you can follow me on your favorite social media platform. Just type a We Can Geek Them, and I am there for you. I will catch all of you on our next episode. We going tech, tech, tech. So I think on that part, I think, I think on that part, I think.